Welcome to episode 30 of the Let's Run Facebook Ads, the podcast, with me, Nick Boddington, and Matt Rubus. Today, we're going to be discussing why you need to stop plucking your acquisition cost out of thin air. It just doesn't work like that. Enjoy. Hello and welcome back to the Let's Run Facebook podcast with me, Nick Boddington, and Matt Rubus. Episode 30. Matt, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Not too shabby at all. Good. How are you? you? Have to, all right, you're going to have to excuse my background. I've got some stuff going on outside um, and it's getting a bit noisy. So I'm sitting in my son's bedroom. I've pulled everything in here. I've moved the camera up towards the ceiling so you can't see the bed. I have made it. Um, but clothes and everything like that. So I thought, you know, it's just not very professional. So I haven't got the light on my face. I've got like half a face here. With the sun on it. Shadow, that's all right. You've got a new plant as well, which I was excited for the to be making a debut appearance, but we'll have Same to wait plant for as you week. though, isn't it? I was gonna go like that then, but it's this one. Plant twins. Yeah, same plant. Same plant. Great creating a jungle. Um yeah, so uh okay. So we had to think about what we're gonna do today, and I think you decided let's do some stuff. God, it's hailing outside. It's actually hail landing on my have you got hail over where you are? It's just started raining now. It's like, no. at the minute, each day seems to have like three seasons in one. I know, it sucks. It's weird. So, leads, acquisition costs. This is something that we're talking to a lot of clients about this morning and colleagues who are coming to us with questions about it. So, we've named this podcast, Stop Plucking Your Acquisition Cost Out of Thin Air. It doesn't work like that. So, Matt, do you want to do you want to kick this off? Because this is... Uh, Something that's, you know, you've been oh, you've been on it this morning. Well, we've both been on it all week, but you've had it this morning. So why don't we start off with that and go from it from a lead gen point of view? Yeah. So the the kind of overarching topic of conversation on this one is really about knowing your numbers, um, because I think what tends to happen is people will do a bit of research, um, and th- this is. This is really for people that are kind of um, maybe a little bit newer to the game without a lot of data to really know. So they're kind of like, okay, so we'll always ask when we're onboarding clients, okay, so like what is the goal cost per lead or what is the goal cost per purchase? Um, And I think a lot of the time it feels like it's kind of just plucked out of the air. Um, Mm -hmm. And that I think comes from kind of, I don't know, like Googling maybe, and it's sort of like, okay, so what's the kind of benchmark cost per lead? And a lot of the time I get when talking to clients, it's like, oh, I need this to be about three pound a lead. And they're kind of like, mm, I think you've probably just read some like old school blogs where it's like, this is typically what is benchmarked for Facebook ads, which in itself is not entirely true because actually lead costs really depend, well, it depends on so many different things like your niche, um your audience like how competitive that audience is um but also the thing that you're asking somebody to do you know like opting yeah. into opting into an ebook is different to asking somebody to book a call with you right so like yeah. those costs the costs associated to that are very different so this kind of like blanket yeah three dollar three pound lead yeah. goal is is not really based based on anything well we could talk about that from the, those two examples you've just given we could talk about that for like literally our own business couldn't we so like so james with our new funnel which is for the consultancy call he he was like okay wrote the funnel out reversed engineered it to what we charge for our consultancy um and he was like we can make this margin x margin and this amount of money with this many clients coming on board if we a maximum 100 pounds a lead. So mm-hmm. his instruction to you to build that funnel was, I want to get 100 pounds a lead. Now that's worst case, isn't it? Now, as we started it, it was all right. And then it went up to 140 pounds a lead. So it was like, okay, well, what would normally happen in the circumstances is that a client would go, oh, switch it off, can't handle it. We just kept on going and going and going, knowing, okay, we know what we're doing. We're good at what we're doing. We know the offering's good. This will go to where we need it. And as yet, as of yesterday, because I called you up and said, because my calendar is just like firing with consultancy. You're calls. like, new appointment, new appointment, new appointment. Yeah, yeah, which is, which is fantastic. Makes me but be I'm, very happy. <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> rang you up and I was like, 
what's the cost now? Because it's literally gone crazy. And what yeah. we well, yes, they were at 42 pounds a lead. 42. It's probably come because we've had a few quite a few more over the last 24 hours. So it's probably less than that now. Um so yeah, so that's 60 percent less than yeah. what James mm -hmm. had written into the basically funnel structure. Mm. So we're well up now. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was plucked out of thin air, wasn't it? But realistic, James didn't go. I need it to be three pounds a lead. The book, however, which we're about to start, but let's look at the book because we used we've used it as a funnel before. That little ebook that I wrote, pound a lead, wasn't it? Or I think one pound thirty a lead, which is really cheap. But you, you're doing loads a day. You know, you stick thirty quid on that, and you're getting loads of leads in a day. But they're just leads that need to go into an automate an automated email sequence. To, to make feed them and give them knowledge and value so they pop out yeah. at different times the cool ones you can't expect to pay one pound fifty for a call lead of no. someone who's going to get on the phone no so pro tip from me for lead gen always have the funnel that you've just said about in the back just running in the background if you can just have something that's like either like like a just a you know like a a video quick video training or an ebook like you'll be able to get leads for like a couple of quid so that's always happening and you're nurturing it and then you've got like your kind of next step in the funnel which is kind of what we're doing at the minute um yeah. so yeah it that that's great in itself and i think that the main thing on you know why we were able to get from 100 pound leads down to 40 is by chilling chill out and let it play out oh i like that that's a new slogan from me chill out and let it play out i'm gonna i'm gonna create some merch on that that's Check good. out in the group guys <laughs> that is good um, chill out and let it play out chill out let like your ads that. play out stop going in and messing around too often um especially at the moment with ios 14 it's the data is just weird isn't it um so do that but i think where with if you're a bit further into the game you can very um, mathematically decide what your lead cost needs to be. And that's by looking at kind of each step of the funnel. So like, what's your landing page conversion rate? Say it's going into a webinar, how many people show up to the webinar, how many people then buy from the webinar? What is that revenue um, goal? And then you can work back and say, okay, so this is how much my lead cost needs to be. Um, if if you've done all of that and then you come to me and say that your lead cost is three pounds, then I'll try my bloody hardest to get it. Um, but this kind of like just plucking it out of the air doesn't, doesn't really work. And we don't need to do that because we've got data to say that yeah. what, need, what, it, what it does need to be. Well, what's your example of Faye this morning from one of her accounts that, you know, we've had that account for a long time. I've worked on it in the early days. You've worked on it. She's now worked, has that account. Mm -hmm. um i think going into the past wasn't it like two pounds we've always been about the round about the two pound three pound four pound mark haven't we for a lead this leading to a course uh yeah so we've actually like restructured the funnel now which is why the light lead cost is is slightly different um so yeah we we've had uh i think and that that's probably a really good point actually nick is that what we were doing before was different to what we're doing now so that is going to change what that goal is um yeah. and i think my my thing is, is it's kind of that whole okay right so i want my lead cost to be three pounds and at the moment it's not to be honest it's seven so we're not on target for what the client wants however so then we you know we'll look at that then and go right okay so like i need what am i going to do like i need to get this down to three pounds like i need to change change the ads and i need to do this and i need to to do that and face sort of saying well um like should we do new creative should we like look at this look at that i'm like well let's look at what the what the data says in in ads manager and i'm kind of like your your click through all is nearly three percent your link click through is more than one percent so you know it's not you can try and get that into a better place but actually like that and is the conversion rate is 40 percent on the web on the landing page 40 yeah, percent like what our yeah, last episode so was talking about 20% conversion rates on landing pages. Exactly. So then, because that was my next step then, I was like, right, do you risk now like making these ads worse and below benchmark if you change them? So then I'm like, okay, let's, next step is what's the landing page converting? Like, oh, that's like 40% too. Like, so that's really good. So what, 
where's this three pounds coming from? We now need to look even further into funnel and say, okay, so what, what's the conversion? For the last seven days, it's on 14 ROAS. So, I mean, I don't know the exact numbers from the client and this is what we're asking next. So we're going back to the client now to say, your lead cost is seven pounds. But is this, if we've made you this much money from these ads and you're not afford seven pound a lead, so we need to delve deeper into understanding from the customer, the client, where the three pounds coming from. If seven, if we're getting leads for seven at the moment and they're making this much money back and we reverse engineer that and it's all of our benchmark, we might actually be in a really good place at seven. Yeah. Because that client wants evergreen now, doesn't doesn't she? She's, you know, she's 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 actually she's actually living the dream. She's living the dream in a way, isn't she? Because she's obviously she's in the property game teaches people mm. how to start investing in properties. And yeah. she was doing calls, wasn't she? Where she would take on a calls on a Thursday night or whatever. And she wanted to get out of that because she's gone to Africa, has she? Like helping charitably in Africa or something like that. Yeah. Um, and she's wanting an evergreen course that's going to provide her thousands of pounds a month from ads going onto Facebook, going through, through a funnel, they close off. And if she's taking five, six, seven, ten thousand pounds a month revenue from it, She's, you know, got hundred and hundred thousand pound a year income, and can do whatever she wants in life. And there are so many. That, that's essentially why people start courses. That's what they want. It's the ultimate dream. It's the ultimate hook from a YouTube video, from a course video. That's the hook. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't happen overnight, does it? But um, you can get there if you've got good value and you're great at what you do. There's no reason why you can't get there. You just need to understand that it, it's going to take some time. And I think. The problem is with it, like the lead cost thing is that companies, individuals, freelancers, whatever, whoever it will be, is like, it, of course, everyone wants, everyone wants everything as low as possible. Everyone wants to make as much money as possible. But if you're selling a course for three grand and it's costing you, um, I don't know, £6,000 in ad costs a month and 50 are coming through and you're closing five of those a month, you're in a good place. You just need to work it out. So suddenly, the, the, you know, a hundred or t whatever that lead cost ends up being, hundreds of pounds for a lead cost. If you're closing at the other end, it doesn't matter. You've just got to look at that sort of margin. But I think everyone in their head is just, I want three pounds a lead. I want one pound a lead on this lead. And a lot of the time, it's just you're in a dream world. Um, and mm. yeah, you need to have you need to have patience. I mean, you know, we've got it with that, with that travel company we're dealing with at the moment. We're chopping and changing things a lot. It's starting to mellow out now and you know we're having to go back to them and saying look it's it's three pounds a lead i know you wanted two i don't think we're going to get you two not consistent consistently and it might happen but you're also got to understand that we're in the travel market game prime minister has just told us what destinations we could go on holiday Pui, virgin all these other places are now throwing hundreds of thousand pounds at facebook on all, uh, all not just facebook all these platforms google everything the prices yeah. are going all over the place. iOS 14 is obviously yeah. making things go all over the place. You're in the most expensive advertising channel now as an audience travel. Will have literally, the CPMs are in £20, £25 CPMs. Timing sucks. So, but if you're wanting to get into the travel game because you're wanting to get people onto your platform because you're a new thing and it's cheaper, to, you know, it's great savings for travel. You've got to be prepared that you've got to pay those costs to get into it. That's it. That's exactly it. And like, yeah, I think that's it. That's another really good point is that if, if when you're looking totally. at your date on, on the ads and it, you, you're kind of like, well, these are performing the same or in some cases better then you have to then look at outside influences. Like you just said, and like at the moment, gen, just generally across the board, advertising costs are increasing because the world is starting to open up again. And, and like a load of advertisers stopped advertising because it didn't make sense to, and now they're, they're starting to wake up again. So I think we're gonna see a huge, huge rise in advertising costs and maybe even higher than ever before because what happened in lockdown was a lot of businesses turned to the online world and started building and growing their businesses more online. And if they've proven concept with that and it's been working, they're now gonna be like, right, I'm gonna start advertising. And I'm going to start pushing that even more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, 
But it can all work. It can all work. I mean, should we talk about, I mean, from an e-com point of view, the same sort of thing. So we talked about lead gen and it's the same kind of thing with e-com. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think, I don't hear acquisition cost as much as e from an e-com point of view at the beginning. So I think from a lead gen point of view, it's very much so the client's like, look, I'd really like to get three pounds a lead or two pounds a lead. Do you think you can do that? And you're like, I don't know. You know, mm. we're looking at all these things that are up against you or this sector is usually around seven pounds a lead or, you know, it's marketing. You know, we, we know our CPMs are up 20, 25 to 30 pounds a lead for our own stuff. And it always is. You're hitting that marketing business world on Facebook mm. as an audience. Mm. It's just more expensive, full stop. Um, you don't really hear it from an e-com point of view. So e-commerce companies don't usually go on there, come in and go, this is what I want my acquisition cost to be. I'll usually say, you know, what's your average acquisition cost? Um, we'll have a discussion around it. And it's usually that sort of helps me gauge more what I think they should spend. So when the question comes up to, well, what do you think my budget will be? If I'm then, well, you're mm -hmm. telling me your acquisition cost is usually 25 quid, your product's 50. To get into the auction properly, well, you need to be giving me like 40 quid a day, really, to actually start really being able to test it through. Um, and the, and the different things, you know, what, the, how, how do you get a cheaper acquisition cost? Getting a better audience coming in, getting really good landing page views of people that stay on the website. Your add to cart is really high because the audience has come in and they really like the product, but they're not just shopping and you've got a really good sequence. You've got some, you've got some other things where they could drop it into their basket, which is never done in e-commerce. You know, you, you go into any supermarket that is good any shop, uh, any shop's got stuff on the till. The till area has little little bits and bobs that you could pick up and throw into your thing. News agents have sweets and chewing gum on the till. Marks and Spencers, you walk down a bloody column of products. Primark, other products you can throw into your thing. TK Maxx, other products you can throw into your thing. E-commerce, no one fucking does it. Like what what you're using shopify go into your app section oh this is me having a little rant now isn't it go into your app section and find an app for free or for one pound 99 that sits on your trolley so that person can go hey have you thought about this and you might take a little bit of work saying if someone's looking at this particular bag throw a wallet in if someone's looking at this throw this in get your acquisition your your your, your order volume up your acquisition cost is going to be better more and it's just all these little things don't get done um and it's like i, I had one i had a drop shipper the other day um and he was like selling one of these fitness things you know you stick it to your stomach it's supposed to give you abs in six days because it vibrates absolute horseshit basically stop <laughs> eating so much and do some fucking exercise right another rant <laughs> but it's like he's spending five pounds a day on a product like that in a completely competitive market, going to a website that's completely mediocre and going, I don't know why I'm not getting sales. I literally don't understand why I'm not getting sales. He asked me the question, it sounds like people listen to this for just for as if, but this is how we are as an agency. We say how it is. He said, what do you think I need to do? And I said, find another way of making money. <laughs> Because he's so, Matt, he's so, so far removed from everything to do with this sector that yeah. it's never going to happen. And I can't put him on consultancy calls and tell him I'm going to make him uh, the dream. And he was very grateful of your comment anyway, wasn't he? Yeah, he's 10 grand down on different courses he's bought and things like that and hasn't got anywhere. He's one sale since January. We're in May the 11th. So I couldn't. It's not in my nature and, I, I, you know... We're busy people, you know, I do my consultancy stuff, but it's busy. There's not that many spaces because it's just time. And, yeah. you know, if, I, if I'm if i going to do anything, it needs to be with the right people that I know I can help. Um, so, you know, he's gone to the course and he's going to start again. But I said, you need, to, you need to be realistic with this. And I said, you need to throw a thousand pounds a month, if not more, if you're going to choose those sort of products at that sector. Mm-hmm. But everyone's got everyone's got everyone's got the dream, haven't they? Unfortunately, sometimes even the likes of Facebook can just be too expensive for you to get your product out there and take too long for you to get there. 
Yeah, or you just need to know that your concept is is what is right and is what people want. And if mm. you want to use ads to test that, that's fair enough. But ultimately, you, you potentially are going to lose money. Here's another one. Okay, so we've got that car wrapping business that we do, yes. which is really cool. So it's not just car. So basically, just to give the listeners an idea, is um, basically what happens is they have advertisers who can advertise on cars. And their IP is they've created a technology which when a car is driving around with a big advert on it, it will kind of tell people how many people, well, the system will say it's driven through the centre of Birmingham. They know that how many people live there, how many people walk there, how many people are on the streets, and it can give them an idea of impressions. So the advertiser can say, you know, I want it to be here and a certain many impressions are going to come back and those impressions in, in turn help people you know if you've got subway on the side of a car it's going to remind someone of subway and they might go for lunch that sort of concept so anyway they're doing campaigns they got one in london um absolutely flying cost per leads coming through at like less than a quid and those people are those people are going on to a landing page they've been having problems with their app so they're not usually it's, it's go on to download an app and they're not so mm-hmm. taking to a landing page where they have to go through a different a different kind of funnel because of the problems they've been having with ios 14 all that sort of stuff Anyway, so um, that's happening, and the lead cost coming in less than a pound. The other one was they wanted to advertise in Durham, so they got Dreams. You know, the Dreams, the bed company. Obviously, one of their stores has gone. Yeah, I'm really up for this. Sounds really cool. I want you to stick it on X amount of cars in Durham that are going to drive around, and you know they've got an advertiser. So the advertiser sold. They've said to us, "This is what we want." And they're spending like hundred quid a day today. They're even spending three hundred quid a day because they're low on the hits. But it's kind of like. They're like, why aren't we getting leads? You know, the leads are coming through at like £35. And it's like, but London's doing that. Yeah, but that's London. This is Durham. This is mm. Durham with a population excluding, I've had to exclude all interests. So just people living in a 10K radius of Durham has given me like 134,000 people. You've given me £100 a day. It's just burning. It's burning through. You know, these people are seeing this ad four times a day on yeah, their phone and they're low- still not clicking. It's done. Mm. They're out. Locals are hard one. Like, well, it's not, but it, it, it's a different. It's a different way of doing it. And also, London, the same radius, way more people. So it, it's like you have to take all of that into account, don't you? Absolutely. So, so from their point of view, as a company, it's like, okay, you're you you've gone out there with this IP. Your model is to go around cities and towns all over the UK, have these cars. So yeah, fine. You've won a client dreams in durham but what you need to think about is can we serve the ads to enough people to get enough people to have all the advertising on their car to meet the client's expectations and will it come at a cost that is viable the answer is not all the time and on this particular occasion no so then i would say you now need to just just focus all your advertising to get win clients and get cars wrapped in major cities across the uk and if someone's coming to you saying, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, if Dreams is coming to you in Durham and saying, here's money, I want you to wrap cars in our advertising. It's like there isn't enough population. It's a catch-22, isn't it? There's not enough people yeah. to get the cars wrapped to make the client happy for what they've just paid for. To get, you know, so you have to, your business model has to change slightly. And I think that's the thing that is the biggest shock with all this from when we hear our sales team and account managers who are moaning, it's when, We've done everything we can to try and meet the lead cost that the client came in saying, this is what I want. We can't deliver. We've tried everything. And we're and like Matt, we're good at what we do. You know, we've got this podcast, we're experts. There are other people in this world who are as good as, if not better than what we do. I'm not saying that we, we are God, but what I'm saying is, is that we have to test these things. And sometimes we're out. It's like, Facebook is now, we've done everything we can. Facebook is now saying to us, it is £4.50 a lead. Not a lot that, else I can do. That's that's mm-hmm. it. That's for the cost. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that's where we, it goes back to what we're sort of calling this episode, which is understanding where that number comes from. Understanding and where the number yeah, comes and from. It, and has it been plucked out of the air or, or, or is it actually, you know, how was, how, yeah, like where, how did you arrive at that? Yeah, yeah. So like from James's point of view, the reverse engineering is this is how much we want to do from that particular product on a year, broken down into months, broken down into days. 
how many people on average, if I, if he works to average conversion costs, you know, you sat down with him, he knows his sales conversions is like, okay, if, if, if we can get X amount of people on the phone, how many of those do are we likely to close conservatively? Okay. So if we need five people on the phone every single day, because we're going to close one, because as you know, we know that some people don't turn up to the calls or they get busy. We understand all this stuff. Let's say one per one out of five turns up to the calls. So we need five of those in a week, which means we need 25 leads in a five day period. How many landing page views do we need to get to get 25 leads? You mm -hmm. say X. Okay. Mm -hmm. Out of those, how many of the landing page views do we think are going to book a call? X, blah, blah. And you reverse engineer it to get to the ad and go, right, I need this many people to see the ad to make that many landing page, to get that many clicks, to get that many landing page views, to get that many call book, whatever. That means I need to spend X amount a day and a hundred pounds a day. We can make this work. Exactly. If we get it three quid a day in two months time. You might say, guys, I've got it to 10 pounds a day. Absolutely amazing. But what that's taken us four months to get there burning yeah, cash exactly. we've burned cash for six weeks we have been burning cash and eventually it's starting to get to the point we're not burning it and we're starting to go into our profit and then it will take another three months and we'll be in profit and then we'll know exactly where it is it'll be evergreen turned on done but what's that and what though six seven months mm -hmm. you're not burning cash what you're doing is you're investing in data you are you need that yeah yeah absolutely right but Essentially, it's leaving the bank account, isn't it? We know that, right? And we educate up that it, it is that. It's like when people say, how much should I spend? More at the beginning. Yeah. More at the beginning. It might get as to the point that this you is, can. you're getting it down to £10 a lead. We're spending too much. I can't deal, me and my team can't deal with the infrastructure of calls, blah, blah. And we have to turn the ad cost down. But we've got there. We know that we know the metrics. And then you turn up and down accordingly. Obviously, that brings out a whole new pool of errors and stuff, touching the budgets too much. But, but essentially where you are, there are ways around it and you can make it work, but there are, that's, that's where you are. So, so yeah, don't pluck your lead costs out of thin air, basically. Know your numbers, guys. Know your numbers. Well, we bang on about the best this. You can. We bang on about this, but, you know, what would you say, Matt, then in, from a Facebook, what, what makes the difference between an agency, freelancers, or individuals who are really good at running ads opposed to people who say Facebook doesn't work and just can't get it working. Because they can't read the data. Yeah. And it's not hard. We educate through these podcasts just on how to read this jet data. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's this podcast in two years' time, people are going, God, it's a bit repetitive. Yeah. And you have it. Are you still implementing the things that we were being repetitive about? Yeah. Because yeah. about half exactly. of you aren't. That's a good point, actually. Um, part five of the Back to Basics. Yeah, that's going to be all around helping people to know what data to, to look at and to get out of this cycle of, of the ads don't work. Um, more about, okay, no, the ads are working. And what, what, what is it that maybe is not helping get the results that you want? Yeah, it's like the local one for that wrapping company. You know, they've got until Thursday or Friday to get it done. And it's like, what do you do? Well, it's local. We're getting five times frequency, which means five people, everyone is seeing their ad five times a day on average. We need to change up the creative. We need to make the creative look different. Because it, and then start. So all I've done, you know, I've duplicated the ad. Everything's the same, put new creative and it resets. So all those people are going to start from the beginning again. And it might be that they just didn't, they saw the one and it, it didn't resonate. And the next one does, you know, I've had, I've had a campaigns going on for a year and a half to a smaller, you know, that, that heat pump company mm -hmm. that was running for a year. Yeah. All we did every three weeks, we just changed up the creative and it went out to the same circle of people and the same lead cost came through and the same amount of leads every month just by changing it because someone saw yeah, something you, new and suddenly it resonated. You yeah. never know when someone's going to buy. You don't. And but it is... Oh, I haven't finished my little saying. You Sorry. never know when someone's going to buy. You just have to be the person they think of when they buy. So there's not yeah. actually anything wrong with being repetitive. You, in sales, you need to be repetitive because that person needs to remember you. You would see emails. I see emails or posts that from the same people. You ignore them. You ignore a lot of these emails and posts a lot of the time. And then you see one that resonates. For whatever reason, that day, 
it went to your so like our email sequence could go you know we can get you a 20 uh, a 20 percent return on ad spend on your email marketing or something and someone might go oh email marketing yeah i'm, I'm looking at that right now it, it, it's a pod it's a it's a facebook feed that's what we're always talking about but we go into email marketing it might just take that one little email that little, one little headline to resonate and get someone back into the funnel again and do business. absolutely like i don't know what what it is nowadays in terms of like the touch points probably like on average around 10 touch points that somebody needs in order to then actually take the action that you're wanting them to take the busier um, it gets so out there the more touch points you're going to need Exactly. So it's always changing. It's always evolving. Online's getting busier now. So if you can do that on social, if you can do that on email, if you can do it on SMS, um, all of these different channels, then, you know, that's going to, that's going to really help. Yeah. Um, but I think look, the, the other thing to just really remember as well is that this stuff that happens like outside of the ads, the impact on the ad results. So I've got yeah. a couple of examples on that one client, you know, James contacted me and was like, what's going on with the ads? Like, they're not like they, you know, they're not getting any sales or whatever. Um, I'm looking at the ads and I'm like, I'm getting more traffic to the website than normal. So what's going on? Yeah. Look on yeah. the website. They've got no stop. So you could quite quickly look at an ad account and go, oh my God, the ads are shit. What's yeah. happening outside of that? And then the other example is, is that um, with lead gen and with webinars, you absolutely have to have a follow up sequence for it to work properly. Uh, yeah. We were running ads to a webinar. It was looking like we weren't getting people converting off the back of the webinar. Yeah. Look at client goes into their back end and look at the emails. They hadn't switched on the email sequence. Oh. So you know it. It, it all of these things have to have to work together. And um, if you're going to do lead gen, you have to have follow up. And that actually leads us on to another thing. It's like okay, so and this was something that I was speaking to someone the other day who said they. They were they're making they were making a loss on their lead gen ads. So their ad cost is let's say they're spending twenty five thousand a month for a year. Let's say it's twenty five thousand a month because it was this was an American company and they're spending some decent dough. I think it was actually like twenty five grand a day, but let's say it's to a month, spending twenty five yeah. grand a uh, a month, and they were taking something like and it was through like a, a webinar. I think it was a webinar sequence. They were taking like seventeen grand in 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 that so it's like most people go oh, i'm out i'm losing a lot of money every single month their email sequence was picking up thirty thousand over a 10-day period which means that they're actually thirty seven thousand up on their twenty five thousand ad spend a mm -hmm. fantastic campaign with margin and that's the emails in the background they're cheap to run you've got shit loads of people coming in through the webinar, through the email sequence, they have that email sequence on, just tapping them off every single day and people coming in and purchasing. And yeah. but but no one can be asked with that, Matt. I I I I'd like to say I want everyone who's listening to this when you're in your car, your office, in bed, on a walk, how many of you truly can't be asked to write 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 email sequence? truthfully how many can't it's a ball ache isn't it it's an absolute ball ache the easy part is doing one ad doing a couple of headlines doing some different creative putting it out there not getting it and going i didn't really work and walking away from it even if it took you which it, this is over egging it massively six months to write those emails right that once they're written they're written you write them once do one a day if you, you want, want a 60 a day. day email sequence, do it, wake up every morning. The first thing you do is write that day's email, have to get it done, yeah. put onto the thing, done. Next day comes. Done. And you've built a machine. In, That's what we've in, built, isn't it? We've built a machine yeah. with different email sequence. When they've done one thing, they go into a different thing. They go to, they all end up in the master journey, which is yeah. telling them about the podcast telling about other things that we do, blah, blah. And then at some point someone, you know, but James in the background looks at all the headlines. Oh, that one didn't perform. Change the headline. Oh, that headline performed. How did the click through in it, in it perform? Mm -hmm. And you're just going in there looking at the data. But you know, if you, if any of these, if any of you guys listening to this, are your, you, you're seeing these YouTube videos of these guys and girls who have got these courses or doing this or doing that, or the e-commerce company that the hook is like, how I grew my, how I sold one, that was one yesterday. And it's legit because I've, I've heard of the girl who did it. 
how I sold my how I sold to Lululemon for half a billion dollars. I tell you how. Some hard work, some great moves, a bit of luck and understanding the data and her conversion metrics for a whole business will be absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. There's no luck there. No, it's, it's reading the data and making your moves based on what it's telling you. And it's not an overnight thing. And I think a lot of them sell it as this overnight thing. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Get this success over, overnight and they're selling you this dream and it is achievable, but it's fucking hard work to start. I said to, to someone, there. when in my course, I was talking to some that guy about my course the other day and he said, he said, oh yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at that. And I, he said, how many videos are there? I said, oh, there's like 58. How long are they? I don't know, five, 10 minutes at least. We were like, bloody hell. What do you want? What do you want? Do you want to just carry on as you are? Or do you want to put some work and in, in something in that in five years' time, you might turn around and go, for our best move ever did? Yeah. yeah. Do you want the, there's no easy route. There's no easy route. It takes time. But look I, at what, how long do we never, spend that? Go on. I'm on a you, know, you, ne you never know everything is like we're like our, we're learning every day like the learning never stops in this job does it no collecting data while. making decisions based on it look it, it, how long has it been six weeks since we started that that funnel things have been annoying now, yeah. you know some people don't turn up to their calls my diary gets full i'm rushing around to get on a call they don't turn up you know these are all things yeah i might have my little grump but this is this is we're taking data and we're rectifying things. We've chosen to do something to the calendar, which worked out better. All these little things, we're all getting that lead cost come down, things changing, and then it will get to a point where it's evergreen. I know something works. I can, we can bring other staff members into doing the consultancy calls who know yeah. their stuff, blah, blah. And we've tested. But, you know, that, that it will be six months by the time we get to that point. Mm. In the meantime, yeah. it's, you've just got to get on with it and graft it. And it's, it but it's also a fun journey. I think people are so impatient with the goal that they end up not having fun with it. Enjoy the process, guys. Yeah. I think as soon as you realize <laughs> that it will take time, you need patience, but just enjoy every day as it comes and you will get there. You're going to, you're, you're, you're more likely to get there and probably quicker. Well, if you don't enjoy it, you've got to ask yourself, what's the point really? Yeah. Now we're turning into one of those like other podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got to go because I've got to get on a call. All right. Well, let's leave it there then. Thanks for listening, guys. See you on the next one. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>